Hello and welcome my putrid rotten alligator corpses. It's SJB here. We got some more kahimps for you guys. I know we've been so excited. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get a helipilot, which means it's going to cost us $1,730. By far the most expensive military monkey to start off here. Can we actually get him going? Well, we've got to see if Quincy is going to be strong enough to allow us to save up that big, chunky amount of money. Otherwise, we're going to have to pick a different hero here that is hopefully more suited and more able to help us defend. So, by the way, before we get too crazy up in here, I've been doing a lot of Chimps videos for you guys, and I've honestly been enjoying the content, and you guys seem to be enjoying it quite a bit as well. Watch times are up a lot. Um, that's one of, like, the biggest metrics for YouTube on what people, uh, to, to let me know and let YouTube know that you're enjoying the content. So, I've decided let's do it again. Let's go even further, and let's do a lot of these different towers as a solo-only tower in Chimps mode. For some of them, we cannot do that completely because it's you know we, we can't get one of these guys to start off with or whatnot so i've been using heroes in most of my games here and i believe that's fairly fair uh usually a hero is pretty common and using in every single game scenario ever and in some situations like with our ninjas we were actually able to take down champs by themselves without any hero help at all but that may not always be the case so, that being said, I'm going to try without a hero the first time around, and I'm probably going to jump in and try a hero if I cannot beat it like that. But that being said, that does not mean that it's not possible without a hero. There are definitely ways that people could power through this and possibly do it. And I have actually been shown a couple different ways that people beat it. Uh, dart monkeys only with no hero on monkey lane right after I showed my video where I lost doing it. And that's okay. We all have different skill levels. We all have different ways we're going to play the game. And I'll be honest with you guys, I usually play it once, twice, maybe three times max. And that's where I kind of leave myself off and say, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done with this strategy. But knowing you guys, there's hundreds of you guys, thousands of you guys, or even maybe hundreds of thousands of you guys that are willing to go back, try it, and try to, like, beat my score. And that is just absolutely fantastic, and I love to see it. That being said, since there are so many of you guys, some of you guys are going to be more skilled than me or just be able to do things that I can't do, and I, I just... That's okay. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'll always give it my best, and hopefully that's enough for you guys. That being said, if you guys want to be the best for me, press that like button and subscribe. And uh, let's jump into this Chimps gameplay. So uh, the main thing that I, I, I'm actually kind of worried about here is I think we can afford it. We've got to get lead popping power for round 28. And we need to make sure we have cam detection if this guy... Okay, he should get cam detection here, no problem, because he started off. Uh, but this uh, 18, $1,890 upgrade is needed before round 28 or else we can't pop the leads already. The good news is, is I actually get to be kind of lazy because I want to put him on pursuit. I could probably lock him in place and get more pops, but for now we're going to leave him on pursuit. Just let him do his own thing. All right, we got the cam detected for round 24, so we're totally good on that note. Uh, and it looks like Razor Rotors, even though it's going to be a little tight here, we should get it, no problem. Um, 26, we get it. All right, two rounds early, because I almost always forget about round 28 for some reason. Whenever I'm doing these weird challenges, it's like sometimes we have easy lead popping power, sometimes we just do not at all. And unluckily, Quincy does not get the lead popping power before round 28 unless you're willing to spend some extra cash on it, and it just totally is not worth it. All right, guys, so we've got things kind of flowing up in here for a little while. I'm going to meet you guys back on it, like, before the Moab, and then we're going to get into a complain sesh together. Or you guys can just listen to me complaining, complaining, complaining uh, about something that I, I, I think I'm right on, but, you know, I don't know for sure if I'm always right on everything, so... Uh, but regardless, I think this Razor Road is going to take care of us till round 39. All right, so I think one of the biggest issues with doing these solo towers is not necessarily that the tower themselves is bad, but in almost every situation, popping down one low-level village with jungle drums and radar scanner costs you like five, six grand, and it gives you a bunch of extra attack speed and full camo detection. And without that, we are stuck with cross paths that generally are just worse for a lot of our towers. We're stuck with them because they give us this camo detection here. And that's not saying that it's automatically horrific or anything like that, but oftentimes I would say that they are worse. All right, and that worseness definitely plays into the game long term when we're playing on a game like Chimps. It just happens. All right, luckily for us, the Moab is not going to be a big deal at all because we uh, were able to afford a Moab shove here with our Razor Rotors, and this combo is actually working out really, really well. And believe it or not, I think what I want to do, even though it seems a little bit buggy here, I think I want to go for a, uh, a trifecta of three third-tier heli pilots. I want to get a downdraft, and with this downdraft, since we do have camp tech, we decide if we want to get the bottom path or the top path. And I think 
I would rather get the pursuit and the quad darts, but honestly, I don't think it really matters too much for this guy. Um, pursuit is nice for me because I just never have to worry about it ever again. You know, just like he's going to do his job. Um, with faster darts, I don't know, it's like quad darts versus faster darts, basically. That's kind of the question here, because it really does not matter for too much popping power. I don't think the downdraft goes any faster with these guys. You know what? Screw it. We're going to control them, or at least lock them in place for now, and if we get into any trouble, we'll be able to kind of move them around and maneuver things. But for now, just going to let him do his job, and downdraft some crap. So, uh, hopefully this goes well. You know, I mean, so far it's going pretty well. But these are some weird rounds. We've got to start saving up a lot of money here to get our next big fourth tier upgrades. We can decide to go for Comanche Defense, which is a little too randomized for my liking. We could go for the Support Chinook, but he's just a Support Chinook. He's going to support me rather than do any extra popping power, at least for now. He'll do a little bit here and there, but he does not get any extra lives for us, nor any extra money for us. And both of those are... I mean... I useless it's like it's like i'm spending a bunch of money to get nothing basically at this point so i'm not gonna be moving around any heli pallets i don't think i'm moving around quincy at all but i don't know maybe i guess i could if i really want to and that leaves us with one the apache dart ship so we're either gonna spam more heli pallets up to third tier or we're gonna already go up to apache dart ship and just gotta go big you know, get this guy going, have him uh, help us survive here into the late game, and decide if we're going to go for an Apache Prime, or switch our uh, note here back into Comanche Defense, Comanche Commander combo. All of those are definitely possible things here, but for right now, I mean, everything's going so smooth, I'm not going to worry about anything, we're just going to kind of let this ride, and we can talk about my complaining. Alright guys, so I... <sighs> this is not the worst, for whatever reason, this just really, really annoyed me today. Oh crap, look at this, Quincy, go baby, go! Razor Rotors with that. All right, 49. It's too strong for us without any micro. All right, so looks like all we have to do, I believe, is just put guys on follow mouse and use them to our uh, biggest advantage here, hopefully. We're just going to leave them right in the middle here for now. Um, and if we need to move things around, we will. We're going to use Quincy's ability as well. But you can tell we're already struggling it just against just like regular group balloons. 49 is a big group uh, balloon level. Oh, uh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. There's going to be some regens coming in here, too, which is just... Oh, no. Oh, no, I think I just regen farmed. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. We get to complain about many, many, many things all at once, but this regen farm is, oh, it's beautifully terrible to watch. You know what? I was not expecting to do this, but Comanche defense. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, we're also going to put these guys back on follow mouse, follow mouse, and follow mouse. And we're going to see if this is the uh, the power that we need here. You know what? Not, not freaking bad. Not freaking bad at all, baby. All right. I mean, the heli pellet's already, like, a little bit beefier, it looks like. And then we get that extra support whenever we need it. So I will take it. Um, I will take it. For sure. I am not upset at all. You know, I will be honest with you guys. I, I went back in time for a little while. And, yeah, no, I'm not a time traveler or anything like that. Just in my head. Just in my head. And the reason why I don't use this tower almost ever, you might notice in any of my Chimps videos, any of my regular videos, impoppable at everything, one tower I almost always certainly stay away from is the Comanche Defense and the Comanche, Com uh, Comanche Commander. Is there a reason behind that? Kind of. Back in the day when Bloom CD6 came out, there was a glitch that basically made alchemy uh, superbly, ridiculously, unbelievably powerful on a Comanche Commander. And you could basically, as soon as you get a Comanche Commander in any game mode, you can just solo chimps on pretty much anything. And that was absurd, because chimps was even harder back in the day when it first came out, because there was less tower options, less uh, uh, buffs, nerfs, combinations of things that just kind of affected us in weird ways. And uh, uh, the game was just tough. But this was the tower, Comanche Commander. That if you got him, you won. And it was as easy as that. So I made it my job that I don't like to use things that are broken or messed up in some way. And I, st I just didn't use Comanche Commander. And it's still kind of stuck in my head almost a little bit that I don't want to use Comanche Commander because of back in the day when it used to be too powerful for its own good. Now it was nerfed hardcore when they raid the Alchemist not work anymore on it. And because of that, it made it a useless, useless tower. So even if I wanted to use it, it was horrible. So then it became like this weird thing where they're trying to like buff it back into existence. And I think it's finally at a place where it actually makes sense. But it's been through kind of the ringer all over the place where it was really, really good. So good that it was absurd. Down to sucktastic. Down to like, okay, I guess maybe I can use this. And now it's like, all right, it works. So because of all of that, I just have mixed feelings on the Comanche Commander in general, man. It's tough for me. It's definitely tough for me. All right. That being said, now we get to go into our complaining mode. And today, we're complaining about a big company. 
All right, so I've, I've done complaining videos about things before uh, where I just have crap happen to me. And I'm sure other people have very similar things happen to me. But all I do is I always tell you guys just the story, the plain and simple truth of it, what happened to me and why I'm kind of mad about it or disliked that situation. Um, you know, the more recent one was the Costco explode, the Costco ridiculousness where my washer uh, didn't work and it took like four or five trips for them to come by and finally replace it after arguing with them on support for like what felt like weeks if not months and then when they were like finally like here well we're gonna fix it and make it good on you and we're gonna give you something extra special i had to fight to even get my extra special thing that they said they were gonna make up to me for it was like it was ridiculous so anyways i'm still not mad at costco or anything like that i've kind of i've kind of like moved on a little bit but i will say that i almost always hold grudges it's just a part of the way i am man if somebody wrongs me i don't just say "Ooh, i'm gonna get even with that person i say "Ooh." I'm going to not only get even with that person, I'm going to make it worse for them than it was for me. At least I try to. Uh, against big companies, that's really difficult to do because they're big companies and you can't really get them back, you know, without, like, doing some crazy suing or something like that. And then this situation is definitely not up to that level. All right, I'll be straight with you guys. Not up to that level at all. So, uh, here's my uh, quick story of how uh, Amazon has, in my opinion, wronged me. You guys can let me know in the comments below if you think that I am you know, just a full of myself or stupid or, you know, whatever. But I, I feel like, I feel like I sometimes really hate big companies because there's just no way you can get back at them. You know, the only way you can get back at them is by asking them to do something. And then just, if they don't do it, you stop using it. All right. That's the best way you can do it. You stop using it and, or stop using it as much as you used to. Uh, don't buy stuff from them anymore. Don't use them anymore. And I am thinking about maybe doing something along those lines. I have not confirmed it yet, but I'm thinking about it. So anyways, back into the, the story here. So I, uh, this is this is a really weird thing, but I just had my anniversary, all right? Me and my wife have been uh, officially married for a year. So uh, I, I, I didn't feel like a, a big grand anniversary present was in order, but I wanted to get her something just a little bit, just a little bit. And you know, I think the best present you can get somebody is not you know, huge diamond rings or something expensive. It's something that they want, something that they've been asking for uh, because it's more meaningful. It means you've been listening and paying attention to them and everything. So that's what I did. I listened to Amanda and she was kept complaining about her charger over and over and over again. And she's like, I really need to get a new charger at some point. So I went out on a limb and I picked out what I thought was a good charger and I bought her a charger for our anniversary. Because of me, I am also a lackluster individual, and I did not plan ahead accordingly, and I waited a little bit too long to order this thing. So, uh, luckily, I have Amazon Prime, and I ordered this thing with uh, uh, one day to spare for our anniversary. It was going to get here on the 9th, and our anniversary is on the 10th. I was like, great, fantastic. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think I take that back like for like a quick second. I believe what happened was uh, we celebrate our anniversary on the 9th, and it didn't get here until uh, too late or something like that. I don't remember. But I had a date that was promised to me, and it did not arrive on the date that it was promised. I even get an email saying it's going to be late. It's like, okay, crap. So uh, our anniversary present arrived late, and it made me feel kind of bad about it. I told Amanda what was up, and she's like, okay, no big deal, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just a charger and all that. But still, it made me feel bad about myself. Then, my very next order, I was super pumped, guys. So my dogs have been looking for... Or, uh, they had this ball, okay? I call it the squiggly ball. And they freaking loved this thing. Both of them. Luna loved it. She, we got her for when she was like a freaking puppy, man. And we, uh, uh, she had it for, oh man, five years or something like that. And she played with it probably more than just about any other toy. But it was made of rubber and eventually kind of got dilapidated and gross and kind of fell apart. And uh, that's when Lily got it. So she got like the small little last pieces of this squiggly ball. And she still loved the squiggly ball. They loved playing with this squiggly ball. So uh, I finally, I've been looking for these things for forever. And I could not find them. But I finally found them. And I found them because uh, 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 I ended up doing like a deep search on Google, and I found out I stopped looking for a specific color of ball, and I found out that they made it in many different colors, and that was the problem. The picture that showed up was not the right color, and it was also a slightly different version of what they did, that like they updated or upgraded it or something like that from my six-year-old version or whatever. So anyway, I found the squiggly ball, so I bought two of them. Bought two of my delicious squiggly balls, and dang, I was so excited to unwrap these, pop these things, because me and Amanda were going to go on our anniversary uh, excursion. We went to... Uh, 
a state park in Illinois, and it was super fun. But I wanted to give them the squiggly balls before we left, so uh, they could have some fun while we were gone. Sadly, this item, this item also arrived late. Oh, well, would you look at that, man? That's two items in a row that have not arrived on their promised delivery date. So I'm a little, you know, I'm a little upset. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, let me go talk to Amazon chat support and just see what they're going to say to me. I talked to this wonderful, wonderful lady, and she was like, oh, crap, look at this bloonage, man. We're going to get Quincy's arrows up in here. All right, would you defend? The question is, do we go for an Apache Prime here? Do we try to save up and just go for Comanche Commander? Honestly, I prefer an Apache Prime. But if it comes down to it, if I need it for something, I'm going to go Comanche Commander. All right, and I think that combo should be good enough for us. Um, uh, there's also the option, though, even though it's going to be, I think, more expensive to get that guy over Comanche Commander. Yeah, I'd have to buy both of these, like, 44 grand extra to get that support Chinook. And believe it or not, that guy, even though he's not as good as the other two, uh, the Marine's pretty powerful. So do not underestimate him too much. Too much. We're definitely getting to the point, though, where this is getting a, to be a bit of a struggle. Holy but Jesus, man. Um, I have not been microbing all that well, but I, I think I've been doing an okay job. Here we go. Arrows from the get-go. Beautiful, beautiful. And we might have to get back and use Quincy's arrows again for the end of round 78. We'll see how it goes. So anyways, the squiggly balls also came late. And that two things in a row, I was like, I'm annoyed. I've got Prime. I pay for Prime delivery. If you can't do your Prime delivery crap, then don't tell me you can do it. Even if they just told me it was going to be delivered in three days instead of two days, I would have been fine with that because I would have been able to plan ahead or just know that it's not going to come. But when you're excited for something, it sucks when it doesn't show up when it's supposed to. So anyways, I went to the Amazon support person and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm kind of upset. You know, my anniversary present didn't arrive here. Uh, this didn't show up. Um, that's two things in a row that I, I was promised for delivered date on and they didn't show up. And she's like, oh, no problem. Here, this is what we're going to do for you. Um, after the item arrives, come here. We're going to help you with your refund. Uh, we're going to give you the refund. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay. But I want to keep the items. And she was like, oh, yeah, no problem. You can keep them and we'll give you the refund. Great. I screenshotted that. All right, because I was worried that after the item arrived, people were going to not be truthful to me and they were not going to give me my refund. Now, Amanda brought up a good point that she said, I have to come back instead of just getting a refund now for it because uh, uh, people are going to forget or just get the item and just not care anymore. But me, you know me, I hold those grudges. If somebody wrongs me, I want to make sure that I, I get it right. So they told me something. I followed through with it. I follow through, and oh my god, we're close to Apache Prime here, but it's not quite there yet. Lots of money flowing in right now, though. Let's go for Quitsy's Arrows. A little early here to get rid of those regens. Now we can clean up some of these BFBs. Hopefully. Hopefully we don't cause any chaos with these regens, man. All right. All right, a little painful, but it looks like we do follow through. Delish, delish. So I screenshot her telling me she was going to give me a refund, and because uh, uh, I almost like didn't believe it. I, I, I would have taken $5. You know, if they just told me, hey, we're going to give you five bucks off. I was like, great, fantastic. That would have been perfect. You know, that would have made me feel better about myself. Like, hey, we both make money off this deal probably, or you just lose your profits on it because you didn't follow through with what you were supposed to do. So then, uh, a couple days later, I came back to Amazon support, and I was like, yo, bro, um, I'm looking for my refund. I was told that I was going to get a refund from this thingamabob. And they were like, ooh, no, 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 you, we can't give you a refund. We can give you $5 off. Now, at this point, it's not about the $5 anymore. It's about what I was told by the other Amazon support person. The other Amazon support person told me they were going to give me a refund. So uh, I was like, is there anything else you can do for me? And they're like, no, you just get $5 and that's it. I already added it to your account. And I was like, um, I don't want $5. I want a refund. <laughs> I was told I was going to get a refund. I actually have the screenshots if you'd like to see them. And they were like, I don't want to see them. That is our policy, to give $5. And uh, I'm like, okay. That's fine. I understand what your policy is. But the other person told me something else. Is there any way I could talk to your supervisor? And they're like, sure. You can talk to my supervisor, but they're going to tell you the exact same thing. It's like, that's fine. If that's what they tell me, then I will understand at the very least that you cannot trust an Amazon support person. All right. And uh, uh, at least not if they don't do it in the chat at that exact moment. So here we go. We're going to try to pop a couple of these BFBs so we can use Quincy's arrows to clean up the bottom uh, bottom layers here. Uh, we're going to go for it here. Decent, not perfect. We're going to go for an Apache Prime here in just a second. Got enough money here for Apache Prime. That's a big change in popping power there. Right when we need it, right in free play. Delicious. So uh, I talked to the uh, person, and they were like, oh, okay, can you send me... Um, 
uh, I don't even remember exactly what they said, but they were like, yep, that's our policy to get $5. They were right. And I'm like, well, what about this other person telling me to, to do that? And they're like, oh, can you email me? I'm like, perfect. I'll email you. So I emailed them the, uh, the pictures of the chat. Uh, where they said they were going to give me a refund and something else, and they were like, oh, well, we can't do that for you because that is not our policy. And that's when I was about to get really snarky. I was about to be like, blah, 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 that I realized this is just a regular person. It's their policy. You know, it's not my job to control what they do. But this is where it gets interesting because I am a big, decently user of Amazon. And not only do I use Amazon, but I'm also one of those people that I, I like buy things. And when I buy things, I review them because I want to help other people decide to buy something good. So I get a lot of reviews on Amazon. I also answer questions on Amazon. So I get these emails every once in a while that says, can you answer this question about this thing, Bob? And I'm like, sure, let's answer it up. It's especially about like fish tanks and stuff like that. When somebody comes to me or just asks a question about a certain product, I make sure that, you know, people aren't going to kill their fish or something like that. Uh, so uh, if I can't answer the question, I do answer the question. You know, I want to make sure people are, you know, not killing their fish and not, you know, having a bad time and everything. So whenever I can answer a question, I do. So I leave a lot of reviews. I do a lot of uh, comments and I am not going to do that anymore. I am just, I'm done. Um, I am kind of upset that they did not follow through on their policy to, uh, not, not their policy, their, uh, uh, what the other support person said. It's like they don't, um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but they're, they're, they don't have the integrity to follow through on what one of their employees said. I think that's wrong. And I look at it from this point of view. Uh, I used to work at a garden center for, you know, almost almost 10 years or whatnot. And there have been times that I have made mistakes on things. And whenever I've made a mistake on something, even if it was uh, something stupid, I uh, I would have to give it to them, basically. You know, if I told them that this was, this was the price and then we bring it up to the counter and it was the wrong price, I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Unless it was, like, something absurd, like this was a $1,000 piece and I tried to give it to them for $20. No. Like, obviously, I would not give them it for $20. That's, that's a little different here. I'm talking about $18 worth of squiggly balls. And uh, they would not give me the $18 for my squiggly balls for them not following through on it being late and all that stuff. Uh, and they specifically said that you could only get the money back if you return it. And I asked the su first support person, I want to keep it. Is that okay? And they said, yes, it is okay if you keep it and get the refund. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm kind of going on strike on Amazon right now because I'm kind of upset about that. In addition, don't forget that I have the ability to stream on Twitch. And now this doesn't necessarily hurt their money market at all. But I am very, very, very strongly believing that I will never stream on Twitch again because of this stupid thing. Because, again, if I have any ability to hurt anybody, I'd love to do it, man. I hold grudges, and I hold them very well. All right, so I'm actually a little bit worried right now about my total DDT popping power for round 95. And I'm not sure if the Comanche Commander is going to be any better here. But I'm also not sure if the Marine is going to do any better here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, even though I'm black chimpsing this right now, I'm going to leave the black chimpsing. And before I buy my next upgrade, I'm going to decide what I think is better against the DDT specifically and nothing else. I mean, against this entire round here, we're only doing 15,000 damage, and a lot of that was to the Moabs, too. So, pff, all right. Not the greatest. Not the greatest. So what I want to do is I want to test that one more time again, but with the Comanche Commander. This time also with the IFR. And I want to see if this is going to be good enough to pop any sort of amount of DDTs on round 95. First of all, popping camo purples, no problem. Camo leads are a little bit more problematic for some reason. Don't know officially why, but that's kind of annoying. Uh, we're going to see if this gives us enough lead pop power, because right now it's pretty, pretty problematic. All right. Without any extra stuff, we do slow them down. That is one thing that we've got to our advantage here. Uh, but we do not pop DDTs at all with this guy. Holy crap. I mean, he's good against the Moabs here, but against the DDTs? Fairly useless. And that's really upsetting, because it makes me think that round 95 might be too strong for our helipods to handle. Uh-oh. But I think slowing them down, allowing my other helipods to do more damage might be the best option. All right, so we're not having an issue yet. We still have a couple rounds to go before round 95 pops out. Um, we'll have to gauge ourselves again one more time before uh, on round 93 to see how we're going to do. But right now, this is not looking all that good. This is not looking all that good. 
So anyways, yeah, I'm a little upset about uh, that Amazon thing, and maybe I'm just going too hardcore on it and really isn't that big of a deal, whatever. But it just made me really angry. I don't even know why. It just made me angry. So, uh, uh, here we go, here we go. Round 93, pretty painful here. We're gonna go for some arrows. The arrows do, like, freaking nothing, bro. And we take that round 93 down, but dang, that did not look good. Holy crap. So it looks like we're probably gonna have enough money to get this support chinook if I want to. I think he might be my better option, bro. I think he might, because this guy did like none, none. But slowed him down a little bit. All right, we're gonna wait till round 95, and then I'm gonna buy the support chinook, and then I'm gonna buy that thing, and see if I can even afford it, because I do have to make sure I have enough money for it. And also, oh crap, that was terrible arrows. Okay, okay. Because the other option is, is that if we want to, we could probably buy Quincy up to level 20. And that might be enough to beat round 95, even though that's really weird. All right, definitely struggling a little bit here. Apache Prime still doing an okay job cleaning up most of these balloons. We get a Comanche Commander here at kind of a wrong time, though. And we get round 95 popping out. So we're going to go for the Support Chinook and the Special Operations first. Uh, I can also buy level 19 Quincy. And we're going to watch this very closely, because this might be one of those things where we just have to drop it and just say screw it and try to go for a full level 20 Quincy or we could try the Comanche Commander. There's a lot of different options for us. That's the main thing. Or at least some different options for us. Alright, let's start with this Marine. Uh, uh, we're going to go for a Quincy ability because we might have to wrap around for a second time here. Alright. It's going okay but there's a lot of balloons still on the screen here. We're going to go for some arrows while they're all kind of grouped together over there. Uh, they're starting to sneak through a little bit further than I'd like to. Marine's not back yet. It might be back soon. Marine is back. And it looks like with that Marine, we do take down round 95. Absolutely stunningly beautiful. Holy crap. All right, now we got to hope that this Marine is going to be more powerful than, uh, the Comanche Commander here for round 98 and stuff. Because even though we beat round 95, it might not be good for the future rounds. Uh, right now it's going smooth. But we can't grab health or... Or lives, which is kind of sucktastic. And now Quincy's actually going to reach level 20 here pretty soon, too. That's another cool thing that we can have on our team. Level 20 Quincy, baby. Woo-hoo! Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, now, it's also funny because my brother actually works for Amazon as well. And maybe I shouldn't be saying that. I'm not really entirely sure. But he works for Amazon, too. So, uh, uh, I, I don't know if that matters at all. But, yeah. Schmer. Schmerp a derp. All right, cleaning up round 97 here, and the big round here is going to be round 98. It looks like I probably, even with this guy uh, happening all over the place, will not be able to afford um, my Comanche Commander, man. I mean, this is 18 grand off still. And we still got to worry about round 99 DDTs, which I didn't even freaking think about, bro. Holy crap. All right, another one of these Marines. We got two Marines on the screen at the same time, which is quite beautiful. We're going to go for Quincy's ability here. Okay, okay. Not going fantastic, but definitely not horrible. It's kind of uh, getting cleaned up. We're able to keep everybody kind of bundled up here right at the very middle. And I'm going to try to save all of my abilities here for round 99 if possible, because that would be ideal. And it looks like we are able to do it. We're going to try to keep them on the screen for as long as we possibly can to get all of our abilities back. Quincy level 20. We're going to go for a Marine uh, down here. Shooting a nice straight line. And we got to hope that this is going to be enough here, guys. No guarantees whatsoever. Uh... We're going to go for an arrows here. Cleaning them all up. DDT is still trying to sneak through to the back of the map. And we cannot do it. No. Okay. So we left ourselves some money. We left ourselves some money. That's the good news here. All right. We're not stuck because we don't, we're not going to get the six grand for Comanche Commander. Even if we beat this round and get the money. So there's, there's no point to even doing that. So now we spend our money on other things. And right now, all I'm thinking is we get some Moab shelves, bro. Just keep them on the screen. All right, let's try this out. Keep them on the screen. Let my other towers that do damage do their damage a little better. Now, we got four of these guys all following Mouse. We're going to hope that we can just keep these DDTs in place and take them down. We're going to go for that Marine. Um, I don't know that that's misplaced or not, but we're going to go for him there anyways. Get him piled up. Get him piled up here. Let the Marine go through a couple of these guys. It looks like it's working pretty well here. We're going to go for those arrows e uh, earlier here this time around while everything's piled up. And it looks like round 99 will be taken down. All right, let's go for another Marine up at the top here. 
It looks like, uh, I think the Apache Prime is going to do most of the damage against this bad. You can see he's already got 1.3 million. Um, bad's only got about 20,000 health here, so you can see it's, it's getting drained pretty quickly. All right, another Marine down there. We're going to save Quincy's ability for these DDTs to pop out, but it's looking pretty spicy. I think we're going to be able to handle this. All right, another Marine. All right, it's about to pop out. We're going to use Quincy's first ability here. And then to clean up this Zermagur, we're going to use Quincy's second ability. And there it is! We get an Insta Monkey of a Monkey Ears! Whoop, 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 whoop. Heli Pilots only on chips, baby! How delicious! Well, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And let me know if you think that I'm ridiculous in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and have a super duper delicious day.